Hello again, so this is a continuation from the other lesson that we just did. So look at the first lesson if you're looking at this lesson for the first time. Uh, same parameters that we had before. A equals 39 degrees, A equals 10, B equals 14. And I went ahead and I solved for a problem and I got like, you know, 62 degrees when I did the inverse sine of 0.88, which was pretty interesting. But the inverse sine of 0.88 is not only 62 degrees. And the very simple reason why that is, is because when I'm working on a unit circle, uh, the y value for 62 degrees is 0.88, but the y value for 118 degrees is also 0.88 as well, because the sign is both positive in the first and the second quadrant. And that's something that you have to watch out for when you're using the law of sides, because you can have a no solution case, i.e. when this is bigger than A, or you can have a two solution case when this is bigger, I'm sorry, when this is uh, smaller than A, but the B is bigger than A. So you've got to watch out for that especially when you get to this step right here. Always watch out for that when you do the law of sines. You know, students love the law of sines in comparison to the law of cosines, but they don't like the stipulations behind it. They don't want to figure it out. That's a problem, because there are stipulations that work behind it, given the parameters that you're asked to work with. So, the inverse sine of 0.88 is also about, um, let's see, I said 62, so 118 degrees. Now, that changes everything. Because if this is 118 degrees instead of 62 degrees, it's going to change the angle for the C value. 118 plus 39 is uh, 128, 38, 48, 58, 57. So 180 minus 57 is 23. Oh, I hope I'm right there. I don't see why I wouldn't be. 23 plus 39 is 49, 59, 59, 62. Yeah, seems right to me. So all we really have to do now is figure out the C value. Well, if we go ahead and do that, we can use the law of sines. I recommend using this ratio instead of the B ratio, because this one was a rounded value, and of course the C ratio, because I'm trying to figure out what C is. So sine of A, which is, uh, where is it, 39 degrees, over my A value, which is 10, equals the sine of C, which is 23 degrees, over C, which I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cross multiply. And what I get is uh, sine of 39 degrees times C equals 10 times sine of 23 degrees. It's arbitrary, it's capricious, you don't, it doesn't really matter if C or sine of 39 degrees goes first. It, it doesn't. I want to get C by itself, so I'm going to divide by the sine of 39 on both sides. Because so what I do on one side of the equation, I do on the other. C equals, and it equals this mess. And I can't necessarily do all that in my head, so I've got to figure it out. So the sine of 23 degrees is about 0.3907. I'm not going to change it. I'm going to multiply it by 10. And then I'm going to divide by sine 39 degrees. Make sure that you put a set of parentheses around it when you're doing that, though, just to make sure. It's better to do that. And then I get uh, 6.2, about. Actually, 6.20. I'm not going to round that any further than that. So C is about 6.2. So the story does check out here, too. Smallest angle should have the smallest side. Biggest angle should have the biggest side. I wouldn't really call that medium size angle, but it is with what I'm working with. And as you can see, I've got two different uh, scenarios here. I don't remember what the C value was. I want to say it was like 15 point something, but I do remember the angles. So if I look at this triangle, here's the given parameters. Uh, I have triangle ABC, where A is 39 degrees. That's about 39 degrees. Uh, in this case, we're going to call this B. Well, that certainly doesn't look like a triangle. B is 118, and C is 23. I can form a triangle like this, given these three parameters, where A is about 10, B is 14, and C is 6.2. Not drawn perfectly to scale, unfortunately, but, you know, it is what it is. Or, given these parameters, uh, my B was 62 degrees, so my A is here, at 39, my B is here, 62 degrees, and that is, uh, what was 62? I don't remember off the top of my head. 62 plus 39 is 101. 
uh, 79 degrees. So it could also look like that. And that's actually really, really fascinating. Now those are just the given parameters that I was working with. And of course my C value is actually bigger because my uh, C value is smaller here. But given those parameters, the triangle could have actually extended outward or could have it extended inwards. Really quite cool. What I'm saying is, you know, uh, my A value and my B value aren't going to change. So what could have happened is my C value could have been a small angle connecting in, or it could have connected out. You know, given those two points right there. Really quite cool. At least I think it is, but not everybody always does. So something for you to watch out for and look for when you're using the law of sides. Uh, hopefully that was helpful and not too confusing. If, you're, if you don't uh, really like the way that I explain the theory there, you can always Google it if you want to. I mean, this isn't the only way of learning it. But you do have to watch out for that. When you use the law of signs, make sure you know when there's a no solution case. That's when, uh, for instance, these two are going to be bigger than this one. You know, if that's the case, well, and then the B is uh, not is smaller. Uh, or if these two, if these two are bigger than A, it just doesn't work. Simple as that. If these two are smaller than A, but the B is bigger, then you'll have a two solution case, and so on and so forth. It's it's actually really, uh, really quite cool. You know, there's not really much more I can say in the law of signs. Uh, hopefully, you found that whole section helpful. Have a good day. Goodbye.